Beloved child of God, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your support. May the Lord bless you. Beloved, should the faithful, the child of God, be interested in the outcome of an election of his nation? I believe yes, a big yes, because if the leader is righteous, the people rejoice. But if the leader is wicked, they mourn. And that is the word of God. The Bible is clear on that. So your leader is very important. The mistake many believers make is that God is responsible for all the leaders. No, it is clear from the Bible. For instance, there was a time that the people of Israel, they went to Samuel and they requested for a king. And the Lord told Samuel that you should stop mourning because the people have not rejected him. I mean, God was making reference to Samuel, but rather the people have rejected him, the almighty God. And so God made it clear to Samuel that he, the Lord, has been rejected by the people. So what it means is that the people can choose a leader according to their own will and not by the perfect will of God. But you see, the Lord does not force himself on anyone. He doesn't force himself on any society, any community. And so if the believers, they stand aloof, they don't pray, they don't go to the Lord in prayer, and they don't influence policy, wrong leaders will implement wrong leaders against the interest of the word of the Lord, and therefore against the interest of the believers and the faithful, and therefore against the interest of the Lord. We are supposed to work things together with the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord in our hearts work together with us. The Spirit of the Lord uses our mind, He uses our legs, He uses our hands, He uses our intellect and our abilities to bring out and, and to work out salvation and righteousness on the earth. So if you stand there and you think that any leader who comes is by the Lord, you are making a big mistake. As I showed you earlier on, and as I cited the example of the prophet Samuel in the Old Testament, the Lord himself made it clear that the people have rejected him. Now, if you go to Hosea chapter 8, verse 4, this is a very important and profound statement which will settle you know, the argument that human beings can elect a leader and the Lord himself wouldn't be involved. Now, in Hosea chapter 8, verse 4, he says, They have set up kings, but not by me. And this is the Lord himself complaining. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off. So you see, the Lord himself has said, that the people set up kings and not by him, and he knew it not. It means human beings made their own leaders, and God had no idea about. I believe this revelation is against the theology of some of you who think that every leader is by the Lord. No, we need to work with God. It's a collaboration. We are here representing him. We need to pray. We need to find a way to influence policy. If you sit down, what happened in Hosea can happen in the current American election. Now, between Trump and Biden, who should a child of God go for? It's very simple. If you ask me to make the choice, it's very simple because the Bible makes it clear that do all things to the glory of the Lord. We are supposed to do everything in line with the word of God. If the Lord Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, then your limits and freedoms 
your choices are according to his word. The word of God is what leads us. If you want to be sure about what the perfect will of God is concerning any matter, you go into the Bible and you reference the Bible, you search, and then you'll be able to know what the will of God is. So if you are going to vote for a leader, you should be able to put your personal interest aside. And if you are broken enough, if you love the Lord enough, then you go in and vote for somebody whose policies, whose ideologies, whose public utterances are in favor or are in furtherance of the word of God and the interests of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Look, the decisions that are taking place in this physical world, a lot of them, they are spirits, they are demons, and all kinds of powers behind the scenes. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived by anyone. And don't be naive. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. The earth is part of a bigger spiritual society. It's a small part of the bigger multiverse of God. There are many things the eyes, you know, the ordinary eyes cannot see. But the Lord has gifted some of us by the grace of God. And we have had the privilege of seeing into the spirit realm. And we have seen many things. There are other kingdoms. There are other beings. There are spirits. Some of them are angels of God. Some of them are demons. And they come in shapes and sizes and all kinds of forms. Beloved, we are not alone. And therefore, if you are going to vote in the American election, which of them supports the things of God? None of them is perfect. None of them is perfect. They are all fallible. Trump is fallible and Joe Biden is fallible. But as long as the interest of the Lord Jesus is concerned, if you love the Lord, which of them is against abortion? Which of them is in favor of abortion? Which of them is against prayer in public places like schools? And which of them supports prayer? Which of them is against the interest of the Lord? These are just two examples. Beloved child of God, where do you stand? Do you stand with the Lord or you are standing by yourself? Do you stand by the side of the Lord or you are standing by the side of people who don't want to identify with the Lord? Your vote is your power and nobody can determine who you vote for and how you vote. It is not only about the American election. There are other elections, you know, which are soon to take place in all over the world. There is a Ghana elections and other elections across the world. If you are not sure, go before the Lord in prayer. And I believe the Lord will direct your course. The Lord will show you how to vote and who to vote for. Voting. Your right as a voter determines policies and policies determine development or underdevelopment. Policies determine development or underdevelopment. Don't ever underestimate the power of your vote. I encourage you to vote for Christ. Vote for Christ. Be strong and prayerful. Let the Lord guide you and direct you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord strengthen you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Once again, I'm grateful for your time. I'm grateful for passing by. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. And let's spread the word of God. Let's support each other to grow. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name.